If you can hear this, do not adjust your Aethervox. This is the Avalon Society Emergency Broadcast Network. You're listening to a recount of the real events surrounding the catastrophe which occurred in the City of London at the end of May 1907. With the skies above London opening portals to the realm of Malifaux, drowning the City of London in a deluge of doom, chaos erupts as a colossal cantankerous cadaver creates carnage in the Cathedral at Westminster. Our daring group battles with the beast and manages to disable its mechanical heart, stopping it dead in its tracks. With the maker of the mechanical malady beckoning them into the nunnery, will our stalwart squadron stand firm against the sinister spectre, or will they suffer a fate worse than death? Stay tuned and find out in today's episode of London Falls! G'day guys and welcome, my name is Michael and I am the Dead Aussie Gamer and welcome to episode 9 of Avalon Society London Falls, our Through the Breach adventure that is following the story of these incredible actors as, oh excuse me, as they play their characters going through an absolute catastrophe that is occurring over the city of London in the early 1900s. Portals have opened over the skies and have dumped deluges of icy cold seawater onto the city, flooding, killing, destroying, and ripping apart much of the city. Our uh, adventurers have taken some refuge for the time being and, and have caught up on their, uh, I guess, their thoughts and their, their feelings towards what's going on. But from here on in, um, fair viewer, I have no control. I, have, uh, I had a plan for my adventure. Uh, and as of last week, that has been uh, that has been taken apart by, of course, you guys in the audience. Um, through the actions of our donations, which allow us to interact and do some cool stuff with the adventure, we have had two quite incredible bosses um, thrown against our our heroes, and they have managed to overcome both challenges thus far. Um, but it has, of course, uh, shifted the timeline and moved things forward and backwards. So. I guess we're going to have to see how our heroes go. But, of course, to tell you more about these, these awesome and incredible people, let's, of course, throw the mic across to our actors themselves, starting, of course, with none other than the ever-wonderful, ever-colourful ever Myri, playing the role of Ludovica. Hello, Myri. Ever-colourful, or black and white. <laughs> <laughs> it's the case. monochromatic. The monochromatic plus lipstick Myri. Hello. Ah, good morning from Germany, where it's actually morning. Um, I'm Marie from Orkenspata TV, and I'm playing an undead woman who has now gotten an undead giant steed made of dead nuns. Yes, that's what happens in this game. Blah. Yep, a giant golem made of nuns. Ooh, I'm glad I'm not back in Catholic school. I feel like I would get a swift ruler smack to the hand for uh, for having having come up with that. But nonetheless. Uh, no, 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 no. This is this is already spanking your bottom material. I'm pretty oh, sure. Is it? Oh, right. That's right. Early 1900s. My apologies. Cricket bats with holes in it. That's what you had. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway, uh, moving right along. Speaking of, of course, discipline. There is no greater discipline than that, of course, of the full length of the long arm of the law. And what better individual to instill this than our ever wonderful guy from How to Be a Great Game Master, playing the role of Edward. Hello, guy. <laughs> So that puts the law at about uh, two and a half feet, is it? Yep, two and a half feet long arms. Yeah, give or take. I don't know. <laughs> Look, like, I'm a barrister, not, not a measuring quantities of air. Now, um, moving on. Uh, yes, hello. <laughs> hello, everybody. How are we all doing today? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Uh, yes, so that's me. I'm, I'm me. What are we supposed to be doing here? Telling them who uh, we are. Who, who I'm are Guy. How yeah. to be a great GM. Find me at www.greatgamemaster.com. There we go. There we go. Done. Well done. Yeah. Yep. Cool. And you're playing? I think it's two and a half feet, though. Mm. 
I mean, if I measure my feet, and, no, anyway. Um, so <laughs> next up, of course, uh, being represented by the ever wonderful uh, lawyer himself is none other than the beautiful prima donna Hortensia Fiddlewick, played by yes. the equally beautiful Janet. Hello, Janet. Hello, hello. Yes, prima donna Hortensia uh, Fiddlewick is an opera singer. She's not entirely sure why London is melting around her. She's not entirely sure why leather rooms start attacking each other. The, 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 the party with large eyes and mouths and places that should not have mouths with mouths on them. <laughs> uh, it's it's been quite a ride. It's uh, yes, certainly been fascinating. Um, yeah, I'm loving the game so far. It's uh, it's wonderful to have a character like. That, that thrives in one environment and to throw her into another environment and just see what happens. Um, and I've really, I've really loved the moments where she's just like, well, let's get on with this then. And then the moments where she just completely comes apart. <laughs> you know, I kind of, in the back of my head, play out a scene where this is happening if um, if Hortensia wasn't with the group. And it would come, come along the, the parts of like, she's there with a publicist and the publicist is like panicking like, oh my God, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. And she's just there with tea and biscuits going, who is it? <laughs> well, right, exactly. better, bring, better bring the laundry in. <laughs> you know, like, just so matter of fact about it all. Um, no, no. Uh, wonderful character and uh, definitely one of the uh, one of the very flamboyant ones. Um, speaking of flamboyant, of course, none none other speaks to it than the man, the uh, the gremlin, the instrument of misery and woe, the and uh, yes, yes, but to, to just I don't know. I feel like I feel like I've got a long list of adjectives, and I'm just going to go straight to the bottom. And just like that, I'm back on track with Billum, the Gremlin. Uh, hi, played by Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Hey guys. Yes, I'm Anthony from uh, Roll for Damage, otherwise known as Vegemite My Dangerous. Uh, and yes, I play Billum, specializing in getting up inside things. <laughs> Uh, I tried to weave that pun in. It took me a while. I, I got there in the end, but, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, and, of course, uh, Billum serves the uh, the ever um, very, very stoic, but uh, but very wizened individual who seems to have actually taken uh, not a shine, but a very, very level head to the scenario that he happens to find himself in. Professor John Scarpati, played by the equally level-headed Till. G'day, Till. Hi all, hi, nice to be here again. Yeah, so I'm playing Professor John Scapati, um, an old archeologist, or that's what he pretends to be. Um, and uh, I got my ass kicked in the last game. I'm not really sure how, how well I am at the moment, um, but uh, not only my character got his ass kicked, but Till himself got the very heart rate increasing situation where he suddenly had to GM for a minute. Um, and <laughs> oh yeah, I did that. That, didn't I? that left an impression. It definitely did. I, I think I will do that to one of my players very soon <laughs> because <laughs> holy crap. So I'm Till from Dungeon Fog. Um, and if you want to find us, it's uh, dungeonfog.com or at Dungeon Fog uh, on the Twitter and social media and Facebook and wherever you look. Um, it's a map making tool, so if you're interested in battle maps, check that out. All right, fantastic. All right, without any further ado, let us begin. Um, starting, of course, with the scene inside Westminster Abbey. You gather around, having just dealt with the, uh, the convent and the monstrosities there that lie within, Having defeated the, the mad priest turned resurrectionist, you now gather back in the main auditorium where people wait with bated breath in order to try and find out what had happened. Um, you know, where's the soldier? He went with you. And uh, of course, wh what did you find out? Is there hope? Is there is, is the priest OK? Where are the nuns? Uh, all these questions and more are met with a sort of a grim look on everyone's face. Um, now, and a slightly yes. amused one with Ludovica. <laughs> and one, one kind of like, you know, <laughs> a, a non-disclosure agreement. You know that says a non-disclosure agreement, right? I believe it's appropriate given the circumstance. Okay. <laughs> you should change it into N-U-N and non dis <laughs> I'm just going to show myself on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so um, 
so yes, you find yourself in the abbey itself, um, and uh, there are lots of people around. Um, the first one to approach you um, once you return from the convent is none other than the priest, um, a man who uh, sort of Dougal. seems to look a bit flustered. He sees the, the monstrosity that's still traveling with you, and it's kind of at a point where in desperate times, they're not really going to turn away any kind of help. So the priest looks you all over and says, um, pardon, but, um, but I don't suppose you know what happened to, to the dear priest inside. I, I, I gather since he's not with you that some terrible fate must have befallen him. Yes, yes. He befell us and then we befell him. And it was terrible. So I suppose you could say that. Yes. Let's say he, he made his peace with this world. He is now um, where he always strived to be, I assume. I see. They put him in pieces. Yeah, they, the the priest the priest looks a little bit concerned at, at Billum, but um but then slowly slowly nods. He says I, well, I think um, I think I'll um, I'll perhaps lead the um, the others in a, a silent prayer for the for the passing of our dear priest. Um, Before you do that, uh, uh, your eminence, um, <clears throat> uh, just out of sheer blind curiosity, I don't suppose that there's any way out of this um, place of um, worship at all that doesn't necessarily have a street level access, so perhaps a, an old evacuation tunnel from the days when members of the church were persecuted or when they were hiding those that they were persecuting, I, I know, something like that, or you don't have to have a, a flying machine in the belfry, do <laughs> you know, something like that. Well, I, I'm afraid no such flying machine exists, uh, but um, as for the tunnels, um, well, you see, there is the um, the underground reliquary. Uh, we, we we often use it for ceremonies and the like. Some say that there's a, a passageway that uh, actually runs uh, deep in the underground. They they say that back in uh, in the time of the old kings, it was used in order to uh, to sequester away those seeking sanctuary uh, during the civil war. Ah. Professor, do you think that might facilitate us extricating uh, ourselves to your bunker? Um, well, I, I let's hope that they well are not flooded completely, but if they mm. remain intact, I think this might help us to get a little bit of uh, well uh, heads up on getting away from here, and we need to go to. If we want to get to the Primrose Hill, to my warehouse, where we have where I have all my stuff stored, um, that we might find what we need. So we should get there. Every time um, Professor Scarpati brings up this um, this building, um, you kind of watch a very noticeable tick in Billum's like left ear that just sort of just sort of wiggles a bit. I don't suppose, Father, you saw that um, lovely, lovely soldier come back this way, did you? Um, no, no, I can't say I did. Um, oh. Yes, no, he, he, he followed, uh, actually, no, he, he was in there before you were. Yes, yes, he was, but then, um, well, I shall spare you the details, but eyes and mouths, I think, covers it. Um, and then he wasn't there. I assumed he must have seen the better part of valor and run. Uh, well, no. He, um, if he, if he had, he would have come through here. But, hmm. well, I mean, the only other place he may have gone is perhaps the belfry. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Thank you, Father. You're welcome. Um, he then sort of. Uh, don't, don't tell anyone, will you, about this whole thing? Really, oh. awful business. Uh, no, not at all. But uh, I, I must say, if, if if you are planning to to, to leave, uh, perhaps maybe if wherever you're you're going, uh, Primrose Hill, I believe you said, um, if you can make the way clear, I might be able to escort some of these people out. While the walls seem to have protected us from the surge of the waters thus far, 
the temperature is dropping quite significantly. And I fear that if it remains as dust at nightfall, we may have problems beyond these monstrous demonic creatures to, to fare off against. I look at the giant fleshy construct of nuns. <laughs> yes. Quite. Madame Mollenberg, how, how long do you think that, that thing is going to last? Considering the size of the soul stone inside, um, and depending on what we do with it, between two months and 10,000 years. Why are you asking? I was merely curious. It has proven itself quite useful in combating those that we seem to have encountered. I was hoping it would be able to come with us, but well, if it's going to last that long, it's going to outlive all of us, isn't it? <laughs> I, Not I wonder, outlive, you... per se, but yes, right, out-exist, yes, definitely. Yes, yeah. right, right. Well, um, unless anyone has anything to do here, I, I, I suggest we um, make all speed, perhaps. Uh, uh, pr professor, uh, I think the lead is yours here. Yeah, will you give me a minute though, please? Billen, can you come over here quickly? Certainly. Yeah, professor like and Billen, to... yeah, the professor and Billen make their way to a small quiet corner. There is a, um, a small um, communion box um, with uh, a charity uh, kind of, you know, like, you know, please donate and give generously. Um, current fund is to repair the roof of the, uh, the fire department. Um, as you read that, you can kind of see this uh, small bell from the fire department. Ding, ding, Sort of floating down the river uh, of the Thames, um, washed away. Um, yeah, yeah. There's about maybe seven, eight script just tucked away here. Uh, but it is a quiet place, and no one can hear you. Perfect. <clears throat> Look, um, <clears throat> that last fight that took me really hard, and I, I'm not sure if I will, if if I will make it. Um, because my my old and achy bones are kind of showing, so I think you've proven quite quite trustful. Although I know that you had your own little scheme running up against me, but I was able to I was able to relate on you. I was able to trust you, and I think given the situation, given the circumstances, it would be it would be better if you would have one of those. And I I I grab into my pocket and I pull out one of the warehouse keys and I will hand it to Bill and I say, if I don't make it, um, this is the key that gives you access to the warehouse. And by the way, and this one here, you should keep because there are further instructions if you want to run and continue my business. And I give a little leather handbook that is with, with personal notes. And is it's like it's like a little, it's like a little notebook with all the important contacts and lists and things there. And I say, you see, I think you will be you will be a great successor if I don't make it. I hope I do, and I hope I will retire. Um, but if not, take care of the group. Make sure, make sure that they make it. Um, you have my trust, friend. And I will pet him and just go. Up until this point, the uh, John Scarpati, the man you have known, Billum, for, for quite some time, has always been a very weak and frail individual. Not, not weak in the sense of mind or, or anything like that, but, you know, it almost feels like he, tr he walks with a, a wispiness to his nature and his hands have always kind of uh, felt light and, 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 and very easy to kind of lift stuff off. But for the first time, as John pats you on the shoulder and hands you this key, you feel a weight a weight that you've never felt before. This is the weight of trust and responsibility. It is heavier than you thought it was as you hold the key in your hand, possibly the last remaining key to the treasure of the man known as John Scarpati. Billum looks at both the book and the key, knowing that the key is what he's always desired. It's been his main goal the whole time. But I think from what he's just been told, 
and the fact that he now holds the metaphorical responsibility within the book. Willem sheds a green-colored tear, knowing that he has to make this hard choice. He puts both in his jacket pockets. I think Willem will walk back to the group and just sort of, rather than like his normal rambunctious self, just sit cross-legged. Silence. Very well. A few moments pass. Um, while they're off to the side, um, Ludovica, is there anything that you wish to do before you um, before we move on? I was thinking about trying to find spare kidneys somewhere. This particular game is that once you're out of combat, you can take as long as it requires in order to heal up. I'm going to say for the purposes of expedience, uh, it is currently, let's see, I say three hours, so six, seven, eight, nine. It's about 9 p.m., give or take. So mm -hmm. by waiting an hour uh, and setting out at 10 p.m., you guys will have fully restored your hit points. Nice. You mean to tell me you want us to go out after 10 p.m. at night? <laughs> I might have done that 40 years ago, but now oh, well, someone wake me up when we're ready to go. You, uh, you watch as, um, as, as you, find a, you find a small pew, and in this particular church, there's actually a, a small little under section for the seats that have these cushions on it. You make yourself this tiny little, 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 little bed. Uh, Hortensia? Um... I would like to find the sacramental wine to make myself oh. a cocktail. Oh, super easy to, to make. However, with very little to chase it with, your choices are red wine cut with bread. Yes. Okay. So I make a cocktail of red wine cut with, with um, a little a sousson of, of holy water and uh, some crumbs of bread on the top. And uh, I sit back and look at the nave. Of the of the cathedral and wish that it really were a boat we could just sail away mm. but it's not a boat no it's firmly attached to the cathedral sadly i think i'm going to have to get wet soon again after your after your your deep and longing sigh um you look up for a moment and uh and you think you see something crawling on the roof yeah i don't want to look at that I don't want to know what giant spiders have been <laughs> breeding for centuries on the ceiling of Westminster Abbey. I do not care. I know they don't clean it. I'm just going to cover my drink. <laughs> Very, <laughs> well. Very well. At 10 p.m. sharp, everyone is awakened uh, and prepares to make their way out. The priest has given a quite a nice little service for the soldier uh, and the priest. Um, he is presumed dead. Uh, and you are taken down uh, behind the uh, behind the actual um, what do you call it behind the altar, and uh, down into the priest's office. There, there is another entranceway blocked by a steel door, which the priest has keys to, and opens, heading down a flight of stairs into a dark uh, reliquary made of stone. As you begin to make your way down, you can see a number of dusty old tomes kept in this area on large bookshelves that stretch out in this almost cellar-like uh, like place. There are some very old vintages of communion wine that are um, placed out here. Uh, some are for res the reception of the, um, uh, the Pope. Uh, others are for the receptions of the Queen. Uh, others are simply commemorative um, bottles. Um, the, the marriage of uh, you know, Queen Elizabeth and, 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 and Albert and all of that. Uh, and um, you can see behind the wine rack itself is what appears to have been very poorly concealed, a narrow passage. Interesting. The priest Guy, you are muted. 
Someone has cast silence. I, I, I'm just doing the sort of uh, 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 how. How narrow exactly some of us have got quite short arms, apparently, but we have not necessarily got short, um, <clears throat> well, we're very well protected against hijacking and, and, and kidnapping and that sort of thing. Let's put it that way. It's difficult <laughs> to drag us away. Well, Indeed. this is a, um, this is narrow in the sense of height and not girth. Uh, while it is quite a, mm. uh, a reasonably wide area, it is, however, uh, causing some of you to stoop. Uh, the uh, large golem-esque creature, which has been lumbering behind you. Uh, thankfully, however, is actually not limited by the imaginations of bone and body and the like. And you watch as its form begins to bend, break, and reshape itself into something more akin to, I guess, a salamander, or a large sort of salamander. Its arms are basically uh, 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 four torsos that are spread out uh, with a multitude of hands that sort of scurry it across the ground as it scuttles. I wish there was another word that I could use, but scuttle is the only appropriate one I could think of. Um, it fits now um, and is kind of big that way instead of big that way. It is the Nana pillar. Okay, well, that was horrific. Uh, my, I feel my cocktail coming back up again, having seen flesh more. Yeah, that that was not fine to watch. I am not okay now. That that Ludov was Ludovica just uh, Ludovica just lets it lets it follow behind her without batting an eye. Yeah, eyelash. Hortensia, you know you're an illusionist. Sorry, you're you know you're an illusionist. You can make it look like a puppy, right? Yes. Do you wish it's to do now that? a puppy? A tiny little Scottish terrier now stands behind um, Ludovica. However, the Scottish terrier is is still a um, a simulacrum that is large, and it doesn't lose any of its stats. It's just it just looks like a Scottish terrier. Yeah, it's adorable. It's quite oh. yeah, little, little bow tie made of tartan material. Yep. Yeah. Well done. Okay. That's fine. This is better. <laughs> yes. This is why we have illusions, people. We don't always need to see what, what is real. Sometimes it's better to kid oneself that the world is okay. How much is that um, per hour? Just comparing whether it would be better to hire an illusionist instead of doing all the makeup every day. Oh, um, well, it depends. You'd probably need to have an, an attendant with you at all times. How much that would cost really depends on the skill um, and, and the availability. Probably about... Maybe... I, I, well, I was asking the, the prima donna. Oh, was... my apologies. I'll, I'll, I'll just fade back into narrative land. <laughs> it's appearing into the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> well, darling, considering how uh, the performing career goes, perhaps we can talk about it because uh yes i'm not fancying the opera house's chances after this we'll see i suppose well i suppose professor you should lead um given that we know <clears throat> well that you know where you're going I, I haven't got a clue um yeah yeah edward i will i will take the lead um just just give me a minute because my back is not not in the best shape for for this kind of tunnel and i will slowly duck down a little bit and i will pull out my my pistol and yeah i will start to yoda forward into into the time the priest says a silent prayer as you uh, you begin your your entrance into the tunnels now, the tunnels beneath London are quite labyrinthian. In order to try and navigate yourself to Primrose Hill, we are going to go through an ongoing challenge. As part of this, what we require is for you guys to be flipping cards uh, equal to a challenge that I will be setting. Uh, Eddie, can we get the cards up on the screen, please? I know we haven't flipped anything yet, but um, it will become important. Thank you, Eddie. All right, so the skills that we will be using are 
No, stop it. Okay, we've got Notice. Wilderness. Track. And History. Well. Your target number, in order to succeed, is 10. And you require... Six successes before three failures. May I start off noticing things? Uh, because I'm good at exactly one of those <laughs> skills. All right. Okay, whoever wishes to go first may make the first flip of the game, which is a five. Plus five is exactly ten. This this undead horse won't jump higher than it needs to. Okay, very well. All right, so with a very swift... Oops, no. Sorry. Uh, with a very swift hand, you... I got you, Eddie. There we go. Uh, with a very swift hand, you, uh, you begin to make your way. Uh, looking around, you recognize some of these tunnels. Um, you, for one reason or another, know exactly where uh, septic runoff tends to go through, and you can follow the pipelines and go, okay, we don't go that way, we don't go this way. And uh, you are helping navigate, uh, at least to avoid those dead ends and nasty areas that, you know, are mostly submerged. <laughs> Second uh, This is definitely the surgeon's guild. We need to go this way. Uh, you see that there's like this severed arm bobbing in the water. It waves back. <laughs> I can try and move just went back. <laughs> you just chat it there for a second. I, I, I can try and use my history of the rather peculiar nature of the sewage system of old London uh, to try and navigate us if anyone doesn't object. I can try and recall from my lessons where the pipes went, if anyone doesn't mind. Go for it, Dick. Sooner the better. This is a very very clever idea because combined with with my experience in scavenging i mean exploring tombs and and old crypts i'm good at wilderness um but having your history as a backup would help a lot right very good well uh, if i recall my lessons correctly um um if i recall correctly um Wait a minute, it's coming to me now. It's coming to me now. Yes, yes, there we go. As long as I cheat fate, um, I get 14 on history uh, with that, that cheat. If I recall, we should turn left now. You're muted, Mike. Michael, you're muted. Thank you. The, uh, the left-hand turn takes you immediately into the maintenance tunnels. A uh, rather clean and rather un... Uh, it's mostly rain runoff here. So that uh, smell of grey water slowly begins to fade um, as you actually turn um, back through the right levels of the streets. Um, all right. Who wishes to go next? I will. I will. Again, I will call on my wilderness skills not to lose track here and make sure that we that my instinct tells me we're still in the right direction yep all right once again your instincts do prove correct as you remember you've 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 been here you kind of can hear the sounds of uh, the the streets above there's mostly just the sounds of water but the surge that seems to come from the flooded storm drains nearby seem to have not um, not affected this this area of the underground, um, but you do hear it nearby. You can literally feel it against the walls and understanding that these are likely the underground railroad tunnels nearby. That's probably where this water is rushing from, meaning that that is the direction you need to go. All right, who wishes to go next? Uh. Likewise with uh, Johnny, I tend to be able to smell my way around the wilderness pretty well, particularly in a dank, dark area or a sewer. Um, and that'll be a total of uh, an eight. So. 
Horizon 8 is... I, I object. No, I object. Objection. 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 Wait a minute. I've got it here. Just give me a moment. Uh, uh, cease and desist. Cease and desist. That'll do, won't it? Right? No? Objection. Oh, no. Objection. Absolutely. Right. right. There you are. Objection, you see? Right here. <laughs> Very well. Uh, you may discard a card from your hand in order to object. And, uh, uh, well, Billum, apparently your, your sense of smell is not as bad as that, so try again. Oh, you're right, you're right. It's over this way. You can actually smell uh, some... some you, you smell the rainwater is fresher in this direction, uh, and that is the way you indeed head as uh, you make your fourth success. Consecutive I'm still success. not out of nose. I tend to be able to smell pretty well. That's very true. Very true. You're doing very well for someone without a nose. Uh, Hortensia. It's notice, history, or tracking, correct? Or wilderness. Or wilderness. Yes. That, there's not a lot of charm in there, is there? No. Unless no. you can charm your way out of the sewer. That's a lovely pipe, isn't actually, it? Actually, what you know what, what a lovely pipe that is. You know what? You know what? Let's I have something for you. I have something for you. Make a unrelated, unrelated prestidigitation check. Now that, my dear, I can theoretically do. Oh my god, are you kidding except, me? Except that I cannot. That is the black joker. Oh, that's the red joker, my dear. That is the... Oh. That is the... <laughs> <laughs> that is the yeah, super good one. I was I was thrown thrown off by the the uh, gray okay. hue. All right, so I I don't have a character for this. Um, all right, so Eddie, I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you here. Um, I'll, if you can, and again, this is only if you can. I'd like you to remove me from the uh, Fate Master box and put me behind the Encounters box. <gasps> there you go. Let's see if you can do that, Eddie. If you can't, that's okay okay as well. So. As Hortensia makes her way down through the sewers and, and the like, you can hear the sounds of static coming from nearby. Uh, the sound of an old aether vox just sort of crackling in the distance. It's a little bit unusual, obviously, because, well, why would anything electronic be down here? Indeed. And uh, as you eventually make your way uh, towards the noise, uh, Hortensia, you can see an individual hunched over the Aether Box with what appears to be a, a small circular radio microphone that has a, um, you know, kind of one of those, well, quite literally, like, you know, one of those old little, you know, radio heads. As you see this individual, um, he looks to you, and as he does so, you notice he seems to be quite peculiar. His eyes are a little bit too big. And he almost has a very uh, Cheshire cat kind of um, kind of look about him uh, as he sort of sees you. It, it starts with an alarm, but then a smile creeps over his face. As he looks in your direction, he look back at him. What's your what's your initial response to this individual? Uh, hello, 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 hello there, hello. My, 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 my! If it isn't none other than Hortensia Fiddlewick herself, I must say, I'm a big fan. I didn't expect to see you down here with all of the rundown muck, but needless to say, I'm quite pleasant for the company. In indeed. Indeed. My word, how, um, articulate you are. Um, so, uh, I, I'm sure, as you are such a big fan, you would, you would love to help us out and, uh, assist us in the direction of Primrose Hill. I wonder, you seem like such a smart gentleman. I'm sure, I'm sure you could manage this. Oh, of course, of course. I, I would love to help you, but you see, there are some, well, peculiarities that uh, prevent me from being able to point you in the direction of the Primrose Hill. Uh, nonetheless, however, there is certain things I might be able to afford you. Uh, rules and stipulations and whatnot. Things aren't what they seem, and they become even more awkward when a man steps into his own story. I hope you understand, of course. Indeed. Now, what peculiarities pervade to the uh, pertinent location of Primrose Hill? Ah, prominent well, the prominent problem that I seem to be facing is, of course, none other than the part on behalf of one of you. 
You see, the Primrose Hill is, of course, a, a well-guarded institution, and, well, my kind isn't exactly uh, permitted to pass through these rather pesky wards. Nonetheless, I um, can still point you in the right direction, but I require a little bit of assistance from none other than your fabulous self. Indeed. Well, whatever pesky and uh, pernicious problem we face, I'm sure we are no doubt uh, will handle it with a proper decorum. Phenomenal. He reaches into his jacket pocket and pulls out what appears to be a blood-stained, soaked paper cloth covered with a runic symbol you don't recognize. Something that appears to be very akin to the symbols that you found at the top of Big Ben. The rather <laughs> handsome and debonair individual passes you the parchment. Lovely, thank you. Uh, By the way, he, it does seem like he is narrating his own actions. Uh, and uh, what precisely should I perform with this piece of flotsam? That's an F. But uh, nonetheless, <laughs> what, you should, what you should do once you, uh, once you arrive at uh, Primrose Hill, you will find a small guild, well, let's call it a, um, a statue, with this sinister-looking statuesque thing. Uh, I want you to stick that sticker cleanly upon the, uh, the stoic form. I shall do place that. it upon the promontory. Then you uh, will want to be traveling this way, down three blocks, once you arrive, simply knock on the wall four times, and you will find yourselves a stairway to the surface. Perfect. We shall um, pertain to be as prompt as possible. Thank ah, you so fun. much, you dear lovely man. Well, it was an absolute pleasure, Prima Donna. And uh, might I say, for the rest of you, pleasant travels. You watch as he uh, straightens up, uh, he takes his, his equipment, seems to tap on the floor, and uh, and then basically walk off very almost jauntily in the direction you guys came from. So he walks kind of towards you, past you, and away in the distance. What a peculiar person. <laughs> what just happened? I, I couldn't pertain to ponder, but uh, we have been given this peculiar parchment, and I suppose we must place it upon the promontory of the statue. What statue? Know, but the statue we have been told is in Primrose Hill. Look, he said it's this way. I suggest we believe the strange man who lives in the sewer. It's been that kind of day, hasn't it? That and you also sort of committed um, by saying that you will actually do that. Act. So if you were not to it, you'd be violating the contract that you have with him. So I think it behooves us to comply. A verbal contract with no witnesses? Well, apart from the four of us, but yes. I, 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 um, yeah. Oh. Smile. Well, perhaps she promised this pesky peasant. <laughs> I suppose. Besides, I'm not sure how long that illusion is going to stay on Goliath, and I'd rather not be in such close quarters when he reappears. Come on, darlings, let's go, let's go, come on, some fresh air will do us good. Yes, come on, darlings. And I steam off like a train in the direction that he pointed. Right. Now, here's the question. Now, this is the this is for the final challenge. Do you follow the, uh, the directions as given to you by the... Um, by the rather peculiar individual, or do you kind of try to make it on your own? The choice is still entirely yours. Well, I, I, I guess that's up to the prima donna because she's steaming ahead. <laughs> that's also true. I We're just following in, following in her wake. I will follow the directions I've been given unless somebody advises me otherwise. Anyone? Oh, that sounds perfectly reasonable. There's a guy in the sewer with a microphone talking to himself and narrate. No, that, like, why don't we trust him? I think this is really good. Yes. Very true. There why, are we, why we are following? Could I have a look at the paper? 
Yes. Uh, the paper looks very much like some of the symbols, as mentioned, that you saw atop Big Ben. Um, the ones that the Neverborns wrote on, you know, for the whole portal ritual thing that they did. This is kind of a symbol, a single solitary, you know. With, with the... With being with being a little bit experienced in that field, could I could I make could I read more out of the symbol? Could I try to interpret it? Um, yes, make a sorcery check if you would be so kind. Um, how about necromancy? <laughs> well, alas, uh, necromancy is the furthest thing from the type of magic this happens to be. Uh, well, okay, in that case, I I can't I can't really read it. It's you like can try. I can try. You, can, you can always yeah, try. I, Nothing wrong with trying. Yeah, no, there's that happens. Yeah, no, it's like, man, it's, it's a, a thing. It's a beautiful symbol. Yeah. Thank you, prima donna. Oh, you're welcome. Come on, I think it's this way. Come on. It was this All way, right. right? Yes, I'm certain it was. All right, so the next person who makes a check does get a positive flip on it. So again, athletics, history, notice, and wilderness and track. Smells fishy. I really like it. If you think it's good, though, John, you got my backing. Follow the other guys, uh, yeah. Do you want me to do another wilderness check here? Or does anyone else want to do the final check? I might be able to remember where... I think it was the Romans who also dug down here for quite some time. I might be able to figure it out, but... This is going well, back don't quite be long so time. shy, Edward. You're a clever man. I trusted you long years in, in being my barista. So rattle your brain. Think about it. Have a go. Right. Right. Uh, Make Romane, Deus, um, X1. What? Hang on a moment. Well, oops. um, oops, indeed. Uh, and you won't be able to um, wait cheat. Oh, wait, that was Romans go home. No, wait a minute. No, it's the other way around. Um, 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 Romans yeah. come here. Um, Romani vidi vici, I think, uh, something like that. I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, nonetheless, <laughs> uh, we should go that way. Uh, are you going to object or are you going to, uh, to royally fail? You'll take two I, damage if I, you I, object to your black joker. Oh, I thought I just couldn't object altogether to a black joker. I'd take two damage, would I? You would. I, th I believe, uh, and I, I will double check this, I believe the rules as they state are that you may attempt to re-flip a, a check involving a black joker, but if you choose to do so, um, it strains your body and injures you. Um, but Power of fate. I, 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 I'll, I'll take the strain. I'll take the strain. All right, let's have a look. This just saw my soul. Objection. So yeah, 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 I object. Yeah. If the action involves a black joker or red joker, you suffer two damage and must discard your entire hand. So yes. So that's the that's the penalty. So that was easy enough. I only had one card left. Well, there you go. All right. All right. You may flip again, as you have objected. It is a positive flip again, to mention. So flip two cards, take the highest. Ah. <laughs> just... Wait, 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 wait. It has nothing to do with Romani at all. What a silly idea. No, 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 no. Sorry. Yes, this is the correct path. Um, quite right. Um, so right. We're, we're all good. We're all fine. Yes. Normani Vidi Vici. That's right. No, wait, that was later on. Well, God, I don't know. One of them stuck around, and then, well, it's definitely us. Well, that whomever way. stuck around, you can see that there is indeed a large uh, doorway that seems to be built. Like, it's like an arch, but it's bricked up. There's no way through. Um, might this be a time for Goliath to come um, to the floor? Edward walks forward, knocks four times, and as soon as he hits the fourth time, you hear the sounds of hissing. Not like a snake or anything like that, but like something sort of rushing. You may, all of you, make a notice check as you uh, you look around. Target number is 11. I see a couple of people have made it already. Uh, 
All right. Uh, who's who failed the uh, the target number eleven notice check? That would be Ludovica, Scarpati, and Edward. Now, you guys who have failed, um, you hear the noise, but don't think anything of it. Uh, however, Hortensia and Billum, you both recognize this as salt. Uh, more specifically, uh, Billum, uh, you're probably more experienced with this. It is superheated salt. Uh, back in Malifaux, the Neverborn were well known for having trapped some of their uh, more... Uh, more expensive and lucrative um, dig sites to protect it from intruders by superheating salt and then pressurizing it and placing it in um, traps not too dissimilar to what you think might possibly happen here. So those who are unwelcome would get a very firm spritz of a face-melting type of acid made of salt. Just the kind that would... Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. So basically, when the door opens, you believe from the noise that's coming around, it will likely shoot up from grates beneath um, the feet of Edward. Doors open. Ha <laughs> ha. I would like to grab him and pull him backwards, please. All right. Make an evasion check, uh, Edward, with a positive flip as the good, uh, the good madam. Uh, Fiddlewick has grabbed you and suddenly pulled you to one side. Not like that. Madam, not in the, not in the sewers, please. <laughs> he crushes you off <laughs> yeah, you almost, almost <laughs> playfully. Um, all right, well, you, you sadly, alas, fail. Um, as a huge <laughs> torrent of salt erupts from this, the place where uh, Edward is slash was standing. You take, oh, that's not what I wanted to see. You take eight points of damage. Oh. Um, we still so long so long the <laughs> do I, do I get the feeling, seeing that he's been dissolved, do I get the feeling that this might kill him? Um, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. What? How, what's your negative hit points at the moment? Let me do some calculation. What's your negative hit points? You really want to know? Yes. Minus ten. Wait, what? You're well, no, minus... I suppose it wouldn't be. It would be um, minus four. All right, that's that's a little bit better. Okay, so minus four, meaning according to this, your odds are well of... seasoned. Yes, you're very well seasoned. You are. You are delicious. I have salt in places that nothing has ever been before. Do right. you feel assaulted? Okay, so negative four. So yeah. Now, negative. yes. 16, okay. So there is one, two, four. So there is, there is a chance he might die. Um, yeah, there's a Wait, chance he might die. Put some vinegar on him. So, um, I would like to use my ability, Fate Worse Than Death, um, which allows me to save one person from dying, but reducing my hit points to zero. Okay. Well, um, all right. In which case, um, Professor Scarpati, as the wave hits, all of a sudden, everyone kind of gets this I suppose this shuddering sense that echoes through the chamber. Uh, the professor holds on and clutches his um, his walking stick and closes his eyes. As the world around him starts to shake for a moment, uh, everything seems to twist and shift and move. Edward, you are standing where the professor was, and professor, you have just knocked on the, the door in order to open it. As uh, Ludovica has gone to try and grab you, uh, you kind of brushed her away like not you know not not aggressively as you kind of almost have this look of acceptance and you instead take uh enough damage to bring you down to zero um we are going to flip a toughness challenge uh what's your toughness uh score you got an eight um sorry i'm looking for that what what can uh, I find toughness, toughness is a resilience check. If you don't oh, the resilience. Uh, I've got a plus two there. You remain conscious, and the effect is... Well, that's not so bad. Um, 
you take two extra damage, but it does not provoke a critical effect. So as you are hit, you you suffer from some very severe burns. But which means that I would be down to minus two, right? Yeah, but you are that. that but that is actually okay. It, like yeah, okay. you're still conscious. You're just very badly injured. You guys watch as the acid burns have, of course, um, covered Scarpati almost entirely. He is in quite amount, quite an amount of pain, but he is alive and stable. He's not, you know, dead. Um, yeah. What's your reaction to this? Oh! So I try and charge forward and grab a hold of him, pull him out of the stain, the salt mist. All right. Uh, as you grab hold of him, he's very tender. Um, there's almost like this crinkling sound as you grab onto one of his arms. Professor, what on earth just happened? Are you all right? Uh, I would be lying if I would say yes, but... Uh... I, I couldn't see you getting dissolved there. I have to. Well, I'm old and, and you're my friend. I, it's, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad I could rescue you. I don't know what to say exactly. Thank you. I, 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 I... Saved you, great pillock. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I'm using the, the sacramental wine that I may or may not have brought with me to, to wash off some of the salt and stuff. Uh, it ah, is that accurate. burns! Ah. Apart from being painful, it is oh, actually be quiet. effective. Can you make a doctoring skill, please, as you attempt to try and, uh, and, and cure off some of the wounds? Uh, if I do that, there is a chance I'm just pouring it in his mouth. But yes, I can try. <laughs> there is also that chance. Aber Herr uh, Professor, ist das Ziel nicht erschwerlich? Oh no, she's speaking in tongues. She's been, she's in shock. <laughs> I'm speaking German. Well, well same Irish. thing, darling, same thing. Have you been to Vienna sometime? I remember that accent. Mm. Yes, I might have been with my husband a long time mm. ago. They're having very casual chats. You're fairly sure that um, John Scarpati is dying. That's that's clearly why he's, you know, amidst this whole thing, you know, talking about a trip to Vienna. It's like, one day we shall see the lights of Vienna once more. Look, have, have, have a drink. He's fine though. He okay. You uh, you end up you end up healing him for two hit points. So you're back on zero, but you know, for the most part, apart from your 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 very very surface injuries, uh, you are. Okay. Also, we gone. still need you, Professor. Um, um, the, I, as I understand, we are looking for your vehicle. Yeah. Uh, vehicle? If, if anything vehicle. happens... Thing. thing. If anything happens, Billum, Billum has, has instructions, but no, no, I will no, 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 do no, no. my best. Just because you're old and frail doesn't mean you're gonna die. No, I didn't. I'm I'm okay, and thanks to thanks to um, the treatment from from the prima donna, I feel quite all right now. I think. How about we stop fuzzing around me and focus back on where we wanted to go? I, that's a lot well, of attention I'm getting right now. Professor, I do think that we have a rather bad conundrum then. Because it seems like the contract that you made or may not have made with that radio man is null and void. He didn't say anything about death when opening the door. I think that's that's grounds for dismissal straight away, to be perfectly honest with you. And now we still don't know where, the, where Primrose Hill is. Uh, What's yes. going on with the door now? Is it uh, open? Is it closed? Indeed, the door is open, and on the other side is a stairwell leading upwards. There is light from the street above shining down. Of course, this light, as you know, is from the burning man who is burning up in the sky, creating an illumination even in this time of night, uh, almost as bright as day. But you can see it clearly, clearly uh, from, the, uh, from the sewers below. Well, darlings, I think, uh, I think we've got to the nice part of London, shall we? As you begin to make your way up onto the street surface, the sounds of chaos and carnage have never been clearer. 
here on Primrose Hill, much of the water has basically run off and down into the lower areas of London. Uh, many of the buildings here have remained relatively unscathed by the catastrophe, though a few seem to have spouted geysers in the center of these buildings and shoot up almost like a like like a like a water feature in the middle of the street, raining down uh, droplets of water, um, even even now, um, creating an almost a, a, a false rain. Um, as you kind of take your, your time to look around and gain your bearings, um, you can see now the full scope from this high vantage point of the sheer and unbridled carnage. Not only are there, not only is there water tr uh, destroying buildings, uh, giant shadows move in, in, within the water's murky depths. You can see countless portals opening and closing all over London, flocks of those creatures flying overhead, people still being picked up and pulled from buildings and then dropped from incredible heights. And worse still, nearby you see a large banner, a tabard hanging from a long street lamp with a symbol of the guild. It is here you realize where exactly you've come across. And this is a guild outpost in front of the Primrose Garden. Well, Inside, the neighborhood's gone quite downhill, hasn't it? Inside, you can see it is occupied now by a legion of guild guardsmen who have uh, been trying frantically to, uh, to mobilize. Uh, a great number of destroyed or, mal or malfunctioning or waterlogged machineries are, are fast at work being put together and repaired. And a crowd of civilians are trying desperately to, to, to get access inside the compound, to get, to get, to get somewhere safe. They, e even though the, the gardens themselves don't offer any particular shelter, um, the simple, I guess, feeling is that the guild would be able to protect them, but they do not want any of the civilians to approach the camp. They do not want anyone to breach the gardens and are, um, are being quite aggressive about it with uh, a few riot breakers remaining kind of on guard and vigil. What hope do we have of affecting any of this? Perhaps the best thing to do, Professor, would be to get your dirigible and just leave, honestly. I mean, we could go somewhere that's... Anywhere would be better than this. Well, except for France. But, I mean, anywhere else would be better than this. Yeah, Spain's nice this time of year. Well. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we shouldn't... We shouldn't get us dragged into new stuff here. Let's try, let's try to avoid any complications here. I would say, though, do we see the statue? Like, sorry, do we see the statue? That was my Look, question. That's okay. Looking around, you, uh, you turn your gaze to try and find the statue. You, you don't recall there being any kind of guild statue like erected here. And that is when you see it, uh, a very notable statue in the... Um, uh, just kind of in, in, in the streets. Uh, it's like an art exhibit that was kind of placed there, originally depicting a, a woman in the uh, embrace of a dance with a beautiful angel. Uh, however, the beautiful angel has had its head very lazily chopped off and replaced with a metal, uh, it's like sort of like a brass ram's skull, uh, a symbol, of course, of the guild itself. Whether this was done by supporters or done by people who, who hate the guild. Whatever it is, it is a defacement of art and culture. Indeed, it is a travesty. Now, Professor, when I put this on that, what's going to happen? I have no idea. I would take a little note and I would just write, thanks for the warning on it. And I would hand it to you and I think, I think it's up to you if you want to take the original or this note to stick on the statue. So you now have two one, the original one and one that says, just thanks for the warning. Well, as we say in the opera world, why not both? I walk over and I stick them both on the statue. All right. As soon as you stick both on the statue, the one uh, with the symbol on it ignites into flame, a green burning flame. 
And uh, as it does so, it, you watch as the statue itself begins to melt. Just literally just... Blah, 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 and turns into a puddle of steel and uh, brass. I'm back in a way. Back in a way yeah, first. Kind of step away to get... It, you don't need to run away from it. It's not exploding or anything. It's, it's almost as if the, uh, the heat were isolated in the... Um, is Janet really good at freezing or is she like crashed? No, she's really good at freezing. <laughs> you, did, you did great. I was like, I was like, oh my god, is she gone? No. Um, yeah. So the um, yeah, no, really good at freezing. So the um, or should I say, doing the statue? Uh, so yes. As this happens, the portals around the uh, the uh, pretty much close to the Primrose District start to exhibit strange behaviors rather than a constant stream of water you watch as they sort of splutter out and stop spewing water altogether almost as if like someone's turned off a faucet nearby huh. there we go i knew it would all be all right you worrying fuddy duddies honestly <laughs> most of the ones around the luck. most of the ones around the city are still like pouring and still you know it's still it's still terrible but primrose for the most part seems to have uh, you you even watch the one with the geyser shooting out of the building all of them start to, to ease up a little bit huh. if i remember if i remember back have i seen other statue statues with with cut off heads and rams on them through the journey through our adventure here uh through your adventure i would like anyone and everyone if they want to to make a history check as you try to recall these statues oh wow i feel like everyone remembers them except for except for tiff <laughs> ironically <laughs> that's an eight on my hand all right. Outside of the courthouse, Edward, you have a strong recollection of, 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 of you, you thought of it nothing, but the other day you, you, you feel like someone uh, desecrated Lady Liberty, uh, a, a statue of, of Lady Justice, and replaced its head with a ram. Uh, Ludovica, you remember at King's Cross Station, uh, someone had erected what looked to be a pylon with a ram's skull on it. Um, Billum and Hortensia, you remember that uh, that someone or some 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 individual, uh, I was talking to you recently about an art exhibit that um, that was that was confiscated by members of the Ab uh, the Avalon Society. Um, Billum, John has no recollection of this, but you believe that he had actually uh, taken this individual um, art exhibit, as it were, and stored it away in the, um, in his hideout, little uh, bunker. Fascinating. John, didn't you get an art exhibit similar to this kind of depiction? Hey, I, I can't remember right now. I'm, I'm getting a lot of stuff. It's like, well, if, if I have one, we might find it in the warehouse. Well, are we saying that it's these infernal statues that are causing this to happen? Wouldn't that make sense if the governor of the guild had attempted to unite himself with some, what was it, a warlord or a tyrant of the of Malifaux? Do, do you think the statues are being used as a, as a, perhaps like a, one of those new things, a, t a telephone sort of thing to, to, to call? To yes, contact. focus points or ley lines or some of those oh, right. well, yeah, things. I, 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 I mean, yeah. goodness knows. But perhaps they are being used to amplify his power. Isn't that what Spring Hill Jack was talking about before? Just amplifying power or something? That's a Matthew, thing, right? Um, so throwing your mind back to, um, to that particular bit of knowledge, Spring Hill Jack mentioned that Earth has very little ties to magic, and conduits, magic items, soul stones, and the like are how magic gets enhanced. You believe that these wards, whatever they are, must be in some way, shape, or form 
enhancing some of these powers. Whether or not, you know, who put it there and what their goal is, is, is completely, you know, could be anything. Um, but as you are uh, contemplating this, you hear the sounds of screaming coming from the, uh, the guild camp. Almost as if a wall had suddenly been taken down, hundreds, hundreds of speckled, crawling, piscine monsters suddenly wriggle their way and crash into the actual gardens themselves, pulling themselves up from the raging surf, which bothers them. It doesn't even remotely phase them as they drag themselves off and start grabbing at people. Some are fortunate enough to be slain on the spot, while others who fight back seem to be dragged into the water. Even the large peacekeepers unleashing gouts of flames from their flamethrowers seem to kill only but a handful of them where one falls, five or six emerge from the surf. They're slowly crawling over the people and there is panic. Lord. Time to leave. Now, yeah. quickly. Once we're in the air, we can figure out a plan with these blasted statues. Where is the yes. warehouse? Scarpati, the warehouse is not far away. And making yeah. haste, you can uh, use more or less these people as a distraction. The question is, is that what you guys do? What, what, what? Eh, eh. Yes, it is. Time Very to well. leave. I agree with Atwood. I, I love how Ludovic is like sort of giving me the, the side eye. I'm not I'm not sure what to read in that. It's like a yes, if only I could kill more on the way out. Or if it's an I wish to do something. Is 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 there stuff dying around me? Um oh Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Very well. With a large inhale. Please flip a card. That is how many souls you consume. Oh my god. It's like an all you can eat buffet. Holy moly! Must have been Ludovica enough. becomes a blur of motion because every soul she consumes, she gets um, a free movement. So she's basically all over the place and inhaling a green glow and emitting a green glow from her eyes and her mouth. Ironically, I've never seen her look more alive. Very true. <sighs> yes. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. You, you, you watch as her motions become kind of um, accented by this smoky green wispiness um, as you uh, as as this movement now basically turns her into the flash uh, you all continue to run making your way towards Scarpati's bunker now a short distance away you see a very small um, what did they have instead of jazz bars back then whatever it was in the 1900s where people would go to drink coffee and brood about stuff. Coffee that house. Was coffee house. Very well. It's a small coffee house. Uh, it's a dirty, gritty, miserable looking place. And it looks like no one goes there. It looks like one of these pretentious places in high society. Next door, however, is an unmarked and unlabeled building. Um, Billum, with the key in hand, you walk to the door and open. And instead of a door into a building, it's a stairwell leading down to a big, solid iron uh, iron door. The key also works on this second door. And as it opens, you see a colossal open um, warehouse filled with at least 20 to 30 rows of immensely stacked and sized crates, each meticulously labeled. Uh, some crates are tiny and small, others are huge and massive. Uh, some seem to have a very distinct shape. Some are being kept uh, with signs that say, please make sure that it is this way up. John, you have no idea what exactly is in here precisely, um, but you know that somewhere in this mess, there is of course your catalog, which you'll be able to find stuff. The largest of the things uh, that belong to you are actually in the center because they basically had to be lowered in from the rooftop of the building above where you're currently um, at. You believe that if anywhere, that would be likely where the dirigible prototype ended up. Yeah, I, I kind of have a little bit of a collector's habit. I, I apologize. Um, I would like to, I would like to, if I remember correctly, I have a catalog somewhere. Let me, let me look for it. How are you feeling, Professor? What am I feeling? 
How how's your health? Um, well, I have been healthier before. Um, I feel like I feel like I'm very close to collapsing soon. Considering that we probably don't have time to rest, let me. She mm. breathes out green, green fog and kind of pushes it towards Skampati. I, I breathe out small energy to... How much are you missing? I... Um, five, um, five wounds. I'm giving you a plus four because there was going plus two steps. One soul is two, <laughs> two wounds. All right, you restore four wounds as the soul energy sort of invigorates you. Honestly, you you never felt better before. Um, your varicose veins that stick out from your various points suddenly take a shade of green to them, uh, for the time being at least. Also, Professor, really? if you ever want to return to your natural hair color, let me know and uh, get me to visit the battlefield. Thank you. I'm I'm not I'm not a vain person. I think it's that's okay thing. They're falling out anyway, so it would be a loss. Um, but this we can was... reverse that. Let's chat about that a little bit later. <laughs> I was. I feel like this is suddenly taking a Bram Stoker turn at some point. Um, no idea where, but this is cool. I dig this. It don't give a soul eater eight ranks. <laughs> Right. Well said, Montague. Well said. You need a little bit. Darling Ludovica. Yes. Darling, 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 I love you, darling. Um, But? Please don't do that in public. It's. This is not public. I'm I'm here. I feel like it's terribly public for that kind of. Well, that's your feeling. It, it, very very much my feeling, darling. I love you, but but please, but, please. <laughs> Look, ever drink, love? <laughs> the doggy. Thank you. <laughs> the doggy that is actually a writhing mass of undead nuns goes. Whoop. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just chugs the freaking bottle of vodka um all right I, better I, much better thank you professor aside, yes. aside, aside from what's just happened now which i'm pretending i'm not entirely i mean to say that well yes possibly the the, the, the less said on that the better I, I, I feel that um, none of this is catalogued in your will. Well, not in the one that you have. This is kind of, um, let's say, let's say there are things I need to protect uh, even beyond um, knowledge outside of important I'm sorry I'm not saying important people that are less important but I, I want to keep some secrets and my associate my successor Billum has all the information he needs um, but, but, but you know you don't understand he can't it, it he doesn't have any rights so it, it, anything that you have not declared will be given to the state that's what I'm worried about well I I, I, I really don't want you to die now more than before but um, if, if we are to, I, I mean, it's, 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 it's a minor point, I understand, but I'm, I'm well, grasping at the law here. It is the only thing that seems to yeah, be real. If I remember the correctly, uh, the building is, is part of my will. It's just what's below the building was not included. And that is not in any interest of the state. Who owns the key owns the entrance, I would say. So... Well, technically, if you feel better now that you know that this place exists, I, I'm willing to agree to do a little addendum to my last will for your sake. Well, I, I, I think with Madame Mollenbeck around, perhaps wills are no longer a thing. Technically, apparently, you yeah. can take it with you once you go. And you I, come I back have a weird, weird taste, though. Not sure if I like the 
flavor of souls? <laughs> Uh, those when the tastiest ones, to be yeah. honest. I've okay. had better. Is it weird that I'm kind of in a place where it's almost like a bird feeding a baby bird? Is that... No? Okay. Never mind. I that didn't kind of vomit like... souls into his mouth. I, mean... <laughs> I think the big thing we should take away right now, Edward, is that what's in this place is what we need. Psst. Big I think um, the big thing we should be taking away is the dirigible, darlings. Let's uh, let's pick up the pace. The, the apocalypse is coming. I right. mean, it's already here. Let, let's, Professor um... Scarpati is, is going through the catalogue trying to find out the right documents. Bilam, you hear a voice. Psst, Bilam. Bilam, can you hear me? Is that you, Mum? No, no, it's not your mother. It is I. La Rouge. Oh, La Rouge. How'd you get here? here? Quick, this way. Okay, I'll follow the route. Um, you kind of walk down one of the corridors and uh, and and you make your way through. Closer, I'm ne you're nearly there. I have been hiding here for a while. This place is very safe, and also full of so much treasure. It's all taken care of. Ah, this is brilliant. I knew you had a long con. This is far greater than anything I expected. No, but no, no. no. It's gonna be different now. It's gonna be different. But look, what, you're thinking wait. 60 40 split? <laughs> I'm 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 working on it. Okay. Well, Luz, you must help him. Okay. You eventually come to a small um a small shelf, and there's a box, a tiny box. It's like about the size of a cigarillo case, you know, a, sorry, a cigar case, you know, like one of those like kind of ones that you flip open and they're very, very fancy. It's on a one of the shelves, and he says, and you can hear the voices coming from inside the box. All right, it appears as though I have my curiosity has beat. Oh, as soon as you open it, uh, Eddie, can we uh, can we flip to today's encounter, please? As soon as you open the box, which was actually a lot easier than I thought it'd be, um, all of a sudden the room is filled with this inky black substance that pours from within. You see that this creature, a mass of gibbering mouths and, and the like, uh, erupts from within uh, as uh, it is covered with masks, uh, neverborn masks, human masks, um, you believe gremlin masks as well, and the gremlin mask is the one that seems to be talking to you. Um, yes, this is the thing you see. There you go. Um, I feel like your labeling needs to be better, Professor. As uh, <laughs> this one was not labeled La Rouge. Uh, Dylan, haven't you looked in the notes first? Uh, all right, no. as it was La Rouge, La Rouge was talking. All right, he's a little bit of, he's a little bit far away. So, um, as you um, as you look to uh, basically, you know, sort of open this box and this thing shows up, it turns to you and says, Wow. Oh. That was much easier than I originally thought. Thank you, little person. Gremlin. Gremlin. I'll remember that. Tell me. I'm going to make you a lot easier. I am like nothing you have ever seen before. I am nothing that you can comprehend. For I am delirious. Julie noted, but I object. All right. As he, you object, you see him smile, and as he looks at you, uh, he contorts. I need you to make me a willpower jewel. Oh, boy. <laughs> you hear? Our young Billim is growing up. He's just lodged his first objection. <laughs> He's going to become a lawyer. That's a seven. Oh, that, that's okay. You need a tw uh, you need a thirteen to avoid this. How you looking? Pretty bad. Wait, object, what is the, Billum. Object. What is, the, what is the um the check? Sorry. Uh, the check is willpower. Yeah. What? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't have anything on my arm. I'm asleep with that one. All right, for my players who are in the thing, this is the 
full thing of the creature. There you are. Uh, all right. Billum, you watch as the creature's body is incorporeal, but almost like a liquid pours into your mouth. As it does so, your body shifts, changes, and a mask appears over your face that looks to be a replica of your face. Although you are constantly smiling, Terrible. you are now, <laughs> you, Anthony, are now playing the role of Delirium. Now, Delirium is an insidious madness captured by John Scapati in his youth. It is a creature known as a woe, uh, quite literally an embodiment of madness given corporeal form. Usually uh, when something or someone has, has caused some sort of terrible, terrible thing to happen and has manifested their negative emotions. Now, he has been trapped here by John for, for, for years and uses a mixture of maddening whales and, and sort of, you know, abilities and magics and powers in order to try and break free. It wasn't until Billum that he's finally managed to gain a semblance of freedom. And right now, there is only three things on his mind. The first is revenge on Professor Scarpati. The second is to find a way to leave because he can also sense the magics of Malifaux crashing into this, this place. And number three, to feast on the emotions of someone who is in absolute and utter, to pretty much to push someone to the breaking point of insanity and then eat them. That is, that is, that is your goals. How you wish to play this character is entirely up to you. Um, I, of course, am not going to say that you are obliged in any way to instantly murder people. There are stats which are different to Billum's, but for the time being, Billum's body is being taken for a ride. So, it is a few moments as Scarpati is looking through these notes uh, when Billum returns. Um, yeah, there he is. He shows back up after having wandered around for a bit. Scarpati, you pull out the catalog number C798G. You know exactly where this is. Right, I'm like, I think I found it. I found it. Uh, it's it's a little bit down the hallway, more in the center. Um, so we sh we should be going there. Michael, just for clarification, did yeah, we like, we didn't see delirium going into Billum? No. Um, for you guys, you would have seen Billum maybe wander off a little bit, um, but then return shortly after. Um, you heard him sort of maybe ch uh, like yelling out so or saying something like you would have heard noise. It wasn't dead quiet, but between that and the sound of the rushing waters from London and all of that sort of stuff, you wouldn't have been able to make out the details of any conversation had by Billum during that time. Okay. Well, would, let's get there then. Yeah. I would take Billum as we walk and I would be explaining a little bit on how the organization is how how the structure is where the catalog works and and i'm like <laughs> you see Bill, um there are some things here that might be a little bit dangerous so please read the notebook i gave you before you touch or open anything make sure you see those there are those little markings when it when it marks the dangerous parts so just don't toy around with things in here um, I trust you fully. So just, it was C79HG. I think we're in the B section right now. We need to go a little further. Indeed you do. Um, anyone who wishes to may make a, um, a scrutiny check if they wish to, you know, sort of investigate Billum. Um, Particularly as I'm reaching into my jacket pocket yes. to pull out the book. Yes. He should uh, not use his pockets. He uses different things. It is. Yes. He finds it in his prison pocket. <laughs> I can just imagine Delirium getting into, uh, into Billum and going, why does this person have so much up his ass? <laughs> why does this bring such a mess? <laughs> oh my God. It's... <laughs> God. What's worse is it's not complete. It's like a puzzle with like six pieces missing. How long has this banana been in here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we get for our scrutiny checks? 15. 
15. Oh, something is definitely wrong. Um, Billum's expression has not changed for a moment. And he, like, I mean, when I say it hasn't changed, um, I mean it looks like he is forcing it to maintain a very perfect, straight, forced smile. Do you need some soul energy too, Billum? Are you all right? Perfectly fine. Never been better. Yeah, at right. this point, I'm going to make a scrutiny check. Because that's you not how well. He looks fine to me. Billum, have you been dropped on your head or something? <laughs> I was a kid. Yes, yes, that explains a lot. So where is this dirigible? Come on. Right. You, uh... Scarpati, you, you point in the direction and you begin to make your way and everyone kind of follows. Uh, Ludovica, you're kind of like keeping an eye on Billum. Um, yes. Well, you're, pretty, you're pretty okay with it. Billum, you reach into your pocket and pull out the small book. And as you look through the catalog, it indeed has everything catalog. And there is one item that is very clearly listed as do not open under any circumstance. C643F. All right. And there's also a, a note here. It seems to have uh, a certain um, chemical compound, which appears to be some sort of tranquilizer. Uh, and they notice that it must be, uh, it, you know, whatever is in, like, subject um, must be tranquilized uh, once every day at sunset. Professor, a thought strikes my mind. When last did you use this... Um, D dirigible. I mean, we m it's definitely going to work, isn't it? Um, um, it's, well, to be honest, it's just, it was a prototype. It never been used before. It was more of a concept that I stored here. Huh. You designed this prototype? I was helping. Um, and I'm, I have good faith that it's going to work, at least on paper, it, would, it worked out perfectly fine. And with my abacus, I did a few calculations and <laughs> I think like, apart from flipping over my abacus a few times, everything turned out pretty good. Okay, uh, just to make a point here, you know the difference between opera on paper and opera in real life? It's a lot of screaming. I really don't want that to happen here. I, well, I wouldn't say trust me, but I don't trust myself on this. Um, I think it's worth a shot. We will see how it plays out. Billum, I don't think that I need the garrote right now. You can put it back. Sure. Okay. I won't put it As, uh, All right. <laughs> As you... Um... As you begin to make your way uh, down the corridors and, uh, you know, explaining about the, the dirigible and the like, um, true to the fact he has never really ridden it. And uh, a little bit of lore here. Um, you, uh, you know that um, as far as the, uh, the whole dirigible technology and stuff goes, uh, it, the guild has actually forbidden the research into flying vehicles. So that's something that just doesn't get done. As... Um, as you seem to get closer to the uh, to the dirigible itself, uh, Billum seems to walk up. Uh, I need everyone to make me a notice check, with the exception of Billum. I'd like to point out to that I have uh, unassuming, by the way. Yes. Six. All right, Billum, who are you targeting? My Ten. first target would be to be taking down the one that would notice me mostly. Ludovica. All right, All right Ludovica. <laughs> All right, so anyone who got nine or higher notices that Billum still has the garrote in his hand as he, with the, still that freakish smile on his face, stretches it out and attempts to sneak up on Ludovica. 
Ludovica only got a six, so, so she's probably looking down at the puppy that maybe is l slowly losing <laughs> its illusionary coherence. It's gaining arms. The puppy yeah, has there's no a lot more arms on that puppy than there was before. The, the puppy now has four human baby arms, and it's walking. Mm. Oh, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? It wags its tail. The tail becomes a tongue. <laughs> it's a horror puppy. It's a horror puppy. <laughs> Refresh your spell quick. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, I, I see Billum walking up on uh, Ludovica yeah, with yeah. Garot. Billum, darling, this is not the time to string a piano. What on earth are you doing? Hmm? I'm what piano? Down. Yes, I'm yes, he's got piano wire out. What on earth? Oh, cheese cutting. There's no cheese around here. Are you all right, Billum? You seem strange. Billum always seems strange. But, I, <laughs> granted, yes. I wouldn't yes. assume that showing him the, the warehouse would put so much stress on him, but this is a bit beyond normal. Billum, would you... <laughs> Step this down for a second. What we're looking for. Um, as Billum points to the box, that is, uh, John, you know for a fact that that is not only not the box that you are looking for, that is the only box in your entire warehouse that has the strict do not open thing. You can tell it because it has air holes in it. Yeah, I would be, I would be, in, as you, as Billum points at it, I would be instantly trying to step in front of it, so between anyone else and the box, and I would be like, no, 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 that one stays closed for our all sakes, that no. one is the wrong box. That one should be open, I'm going to charge at the box, I have a charge of 11, by the way. Wow. <laughs> okay, I'm Billum to... runs. <sighs> As we'll he does quickly so. cover my openings. <laughs> All right. As you do so, you cover your own. So at this point, <laughs> took as, me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Clench the butt cheeks. Bill <laughs> <laughs> and the invader. <laughs> Oof. Vlad the Impaler. This is like, you know, the Chinese Whispers version that eventually came to Billum. Um, <laughs> uh, Hortensia, what are you doing? Um, I would like to use Disappearing Act. Ooh. Ooh. I would like to make something disappear into thin air. Okay. And I want to make that box disappear into thin air because I see it has air holes and I see that John Scarpati does not want it opened and even I can do that amount of math. <laughs> Very well. You cast your, your magics and you hesto presto the box away. Um, Edward, what are you doing? Pointing. I think that's the wrong box. It doesn't look like it's big enough for a dirigible to be. Not that I'm particularly aware of how big uh, actually, it is. Actually, it, it actually does look pretty big for, you know, it, it's like a, maybe a one and a half stories tall. I thought the original rules were like 400 foot long. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, when it's it's a type. maybe it's maybe it's a little one. It's inflatable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think Edward actually knows what's going on at this particular moment in time because his notice was incredibly low. I, I think he's he's yes he's 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 just looking around he's he's yeah just all right Ludovica Ludovica was trying to taste the air around Billum if if there's more than one soul involved. oh there is absolutely more well it's not a soul energy that you sense it is a you definitely know the sense of a woe um, it is like how can I put it. All souls have flavor because of the emotional spectrums that they live, right? It's mm. almost like eating a lemon or, you know, licking a salt lick. It is literally a single flavor, and that is for you very indicative of the woes. They are personifications of, of different emotions and the like. This one is one of madness. Cranberries. <laughs> All right. As the magic gathers around the box, it spins and spirals. And as it does, all of a sudden, with a magical woof, 
the box disappears, leaving what appears to be a pile of bones, a goat with two heads, and this creature. Eddie, if you would be so kind. Now, for those of you, uh, I do want to apologize in advance. Uh, as I have tried this, and I will apologize for any eardrums because I haven't tested this out properly, but you suddenly hear very clearly as this huge creature <laughs> takes a few massive steps. Um, once again, thank you to our lovely audience for once again hitting that square mark in the boss monster battle and allow me to introduce you to probably one of my favorite monsters in this game. And that is of course the dreaded Malasaurus Rex. John Scarpati has memories of his time in his youth where this creature had tore up an entire train line that was supposed to be used to bring supplies to the Northern Wastes. Its teeth tore through steel like it was butter and ripped up most of the train line as if it had slept with its ex-wife. It was an angry, vicious, nasty, and ornery creature. And he actually, this is a conservation deal. Um, originally, the guild wanted to dissect and destroy it, but thanks to Scarpati and his connections to the Avalon Society, he actually managed to, um, he treats it rather humanely. Believe it or not, um, there is actually a whole process where this creature is taken uh, into a large reserve with several animals that have been selected for it to be able to hunt and live. For the most part, however, it does have a large hibernation season. And during that hibernation season, it remains in this box under sedation. However, you have not had time to sedate it today as, well, you've had other things planned. And this creature knows that, you know, once it gets out of the box, it's gonna be fed. So while in the box, it's perfectly fine. However, as we have presto changed that box into non-existence, the dinosaur looks at everyone. It scans. Yes. Oh, I'd just like to add that um, the next moment as the dinosaur is looking and scanning, there's just a moment and then pss, the box appears back as it does uh, at the end, five feet away and goes clang on the floor. <laughs> it startles it for a moment as the creature turns to see the no where the noise came from. You are in its blind spot for the moment. What do you guys do? Hey, eat lawyers, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The track record for lawyers versus T Rexes is not high. Oh wow! Why? Okay, sorry. I just got the message from Eddie. Uh, BJ Varo, by the way, from my part, thank you so much for your donations. We love the fact that you're enjoying this show. We love the fact that you've chosen to donate and to support the channel and stuff like that. On the other hand, um, disadvantage to everyone. Um, so yeah. Um, also, um, the, this will override one of Hortensia's advantages, because she has full advantages. So yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for our pain. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right, uh, so as it turns away, um, what is your course of action? Again, you find yourselves uh, flanked by many of these, uh, these long, um, very, very multi-storied shelves. You guys are just sprinting down. Are you heading towards the dirigible? Are you splitting up? Are you staying together? What's going on? Let's find out. Let's start with Professor. Uh, actually, you know what? yeah, let's start with the professor. Professor, where are you going? Okay, so the, the last the last moment I remembered before that happened was that Billum was charging at the box or at me. Right. Um, while suddenly the box disappeared, which was kind of only half the effect that I was hoping for, leaving, mm -hmm. leaving the T-Rex still there, um, which means that I would be hoping that Billum is still charging and do a barrel roll to the side, hoping that Billum is charging the T-Rex now and not me. 
All right. Uh, make an acrobatics check. If you manage to succeed, I will say that Dillum's charge uh, is going to overshoot and will indeed risk running into the T-Rex. Well, that's that would be a six. I, I think I would cheat that one because I really, I, I don't want to be stuck between Billum and the T-Rex, so I will make it a 10. Okay. Um, so the Billum, can you just flip for me? You'll be using the stats for this other creature for the time being. And its acrobatics is not great. Its acrobatics is actually negative two. <laughs> All right, that is a five. Sorry, Billum, did you say something? Five, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. All right, well, as soon as you you rush, uh, John, you barrel to the side, and Billum, you are unable to stop yourself. As you basically are about to hit the back of the leg of this creature, you watch as your, the, your mouth opens up, And all of you can now see this, um, this this giant thing, the 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 um, uh, this madness uh, of teeth and fangs and the like, uh, suddenly pouring out of Billum. And as it does so, it begins to coalesce once again. The dinosaur looks at it and snaps, and then the dinosaur eats it in one big gulp. Um, Hortensia, what are you doing as um, as the scene unfolds? Well, I'm running. That's what I'm doing. I'm running. I put my thing over my head. And I try to look inedible, and I'm going to go hide behind some crates. There are many crates. I'm going to hide behind some. My eventual plan is to get up high and shoot this thing where it can't eat me. But first of all, I'm going to hide. Yes. All right, very well. Uh, you get up high and attempt to, well, I mean, you will again try to get up high and, and attempt to hide, but you finally make your way, um, well, because you didn't say you were following Scarpati, Scarpati is still in the nearby area of the T-Rex. The and I'm going to actually move your tiny model so that I can know where exactly everyone is. So, so Scarpati is over by the, uh, by the Rex. Um, Hortensia, you've, you've, you've gone off in, in a different direction. You've kind of headed... Uh, into the corridors in order to try and lose it. Also, you can climb the uh, the, the uh, actual shelves to get higher. So that's kind of the direction you've pulled yourself into. Um, Edward, where are you going as you are also, for the time being, quite close to the uh, creature? Straight lines? Path of least resistance? Far away as humanly possible. All right. Are you going to head in the way that Hortensia went, or are you going in a different way? different direction. If we split up, it can't eat us all at once. All right, very well. You uh, begin to make your way into a different direction, uh, separating so that you can make yourselves a more wider target. Uh, Ludovica and the, uh, the, the, the construct. I, I, I say to Goliath, get bigger, get bigger! <laughs> and then turn around to them. I'm Rex. Mm -hmm. and try to get a good bite of its soul. I'm using my power pull of the grave, so Ludovica slowly kind of flips her veil up and goes and opens her arms wide and tries to concentrate her necromantic power on the huge, disgusting creature, and I have to flip for a necromancy check, and it can resist with willpower. Right, so the, the well, its willpower is 13. That's what you need to overcome. As you try to suck in its soul energy by force. Then we're going to, to um, yeah, then it's not going to work. It doesn't even make sense to cheat because I'm short of one point. Because it says I have to flip against an eight and unresist, it says willpower, then it how does it? Well, yeah. So basically, you'd have to get a. You'd okay. have to beat a thirteen, like of whatever suit you need to cast the spell. Well, then that was a lost 
chance um and i draw my pistol that's it i'm probably now standing directly in front of the monster like a huge idiot all right the dog as you watch its body uh suddenly increase in size now it is not as big as this 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 rex is um but it does get a lot larger eddie can we get a picture of goliath on screen please as the dog's arms then become this flexing muscles its shoulders pad out its legs become huge and 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 quite powerful um billam you regain consciousness as it were uh one moment you were talking to la rouge who was clearly in a box the next minute you are at, you are you're kind of looking at what what you think is a tree you feel it oh there's something so familiar about it it's almost like home you remember the bark of the wood back in the mosses around the bogs. Your eyes open. It's kind of like a scaly hide. Almost like a crocodile, but like a tree? A crocodile tree? You look up to see the top of the crocodile tree. Oh, yeah, this is definitely a crocodile tree. 100% a goddamn crocodile tree. And with that, that is where, where we will leave today's session with Billum looking square up at this thing going, shit. Um, all right. Thank you so much, everyone. I had an absolute blast. And thank you to the sadist in my audience. Um, you are absolutely fantastic and incredible. Um, again, like always, because our boss monster did come in within the last half an hour, I followed through with my uh, my usual thing. I want the boss monsters to kind of be a thing. So we are uh, turning it into a, uh, a fight for next week. Now, keeping in mind, guys, fights in Malifaux do not necessarily need to be long, drawn-out uh, combats with, with, with glorious battle. Sometimes just running away is a perfectly acceptable answer. Um, you guys... Or just also... dying right away. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I forgot to do one thing. I should do one thing. You know, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to do one more thing. Can we get the T-Rex back up? Super quick, Eddie. I'm going to do one more thing. I'll do one more thing. I was going to do it, and then I forgot I was going to do it, and now I want to do it. Yeah, we go. All right. As the uh, the T-Rex turns around and sees Billum and Scarpati and, uh, and Ludovica and, and Goliath, the T-Rex looks and says, Hello, John. Did you miss me? No. <laughs> and that's where I'll end. Because <laughs> now it is also possessed by an insidious madness, uh, which is, of course, going to be driving this giant tank very much directly against uh, Professor Scarpati. Um, so I'm very happy about this, um, mostly because, A, I, ha I definitely love the... Um, the Malasaurus Rex. Um, I, it's, like I said, one of my favorite things. It's basically a T-Rex. Who doesn't like T-Rexes? Um, the, the other thing that I, uh, to let you guys know what was actually in the actual, um, uh, the actual thing before the, the Malasaurus Rex, it was actually a, uh, terrarium with what looked to be like, kind of like an angler fish person and they were swimming around. Uh, but that's not, that's not the case now. Now it's a T-Rex. Um, no, I had a fantastic time. And of course, uh, my players hopefully had a great time. Did you guys, did you guys feel like, uh, you guys got through a bit and, did some stuff. There are some great moments, and I really wish we did like kind of an unpack thing, but of course it's quite early or quite late, depending on where we happen to be. Um, but one thing I do want to unpack very, very quickly is I am loving Professor Scarpati's contributions in today's episode. The the scene with the salt and stuff like that, I just want to say kudos. Um, that was such a great moment for you guys, and I think um, I think I quite, I, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Did, 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 did Janet just give you that beholder, like, just pass it to you, like, oh, here you go. Yes. Janet? Yeah. Catch? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Oh, I got it. I got it. Thank you. <laughs> it's like magic. Uh, all right. Station. And speaking That's of magic, That's why you of need course, illusionists. That's yeah, good. why you bring me. Because I drink wine and make things disappear. <laughs> like protective caging like, like the wine for example the wine <laughs> all right now uh, of course let us uh, let us give our outros and uh, give our thanks of course uh, to of course our wonderful players tell us guys where can we find all of your stuff starting with of course none other than the ever wonderful uh, Billum 
who plays, of course, oh, sorry, Anthony, who plays the role of Gillum. Um, no, no, Gillum plays who also, me. Right. Who, also, who also apparently plays an Insidious Madness. That was right. creepy as shit, dude. Thank you. Um, I had a wild time tonight. But yeah, I've been playing Billum, the insidious man who loves to get up inside you. And I think my aim for the next session is to get inside of a T-Rex. Um, <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I'd have to figure I, out how to get you out. That would that, That's my biggest issue. It's not you getting in. It's trying to figure out how to get you out. I get Reverse you. peristalsis. <laughs> Come out the front. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm Anthony, otherwise known as Vegemite Dangerous. I'm from Roll for Damage, an Australian D&D channel or TTRPG channel. Uh, you can find me there pretty much all the time doing things. We've got shows running all the time. It's a crazy madhouse that I run. Um, but yes, that's where you can find me. Fantastic, fantastic. And uh, next up, of course, playing the role of Professor Scarpati. Till, where can we find all your stuff? You can find all of our stuff at dungeonfork.com or just using dungeonfork, the handle dungeonfork on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or wherever you, or on Google, just enter it. Um, it's a map making tool. So if you're playing um, with battle maps and you need some battle maps, just go there, sign up a free account and well, have a go at map creation. Uh, it is actually a lot of fun. And if you ever want to watch some of uh, Till's maps and stuff in action, uh, then you should head on over to the How to Be a Great GM channel, being run, of course, by our ever delightful guy from How to Be a Great GM, playing the role of Edward. Hello, guy. Hello. Yeah. Uh, tell us, what have you got going at the moment? God, nothing in comparison to this. Um, <laughs> what, well, no giant um... T-Rexes attacking your turncoat allies while you're trying to fly, find a dirigible to fly into the star that is a burning man above London? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this that. is payback, by the way. You know, this whole series was built as a payback to you. Fairly certain. <laughs> Look at it! It is it's even trying to eat me! Look at it! <laughs> That's it. I, that's knew it. I knew it. The Lord always gets eaten by the T-Rex. Yes, anyway, right. you can find me at um, How to Be a Great GM on YouTube where we do all sorts of crazy things. Um, I'm looking forward to next week's game uh, with you, Michael. Um, so they should definitely come and find that on Great GM Live on YouTube. It's going to be an absolute blast in one way or another. I'm not sure. Um, well, they'll be blasting. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. And, we, and we'll we'll have an ad for that so you guys can 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 see the poster and whatnot. Um, and uh, by the way, as as another reference back to um, to Till and to of course the next person I'm going to be talking about, Janet. Uh, if you want to see a really really great example of what you can actually do with Dungeon Fog, I highly recommend if you haven't watched them yet. Uh, Guy did a show for Cobalt Con. Uh, that was a great example of some of some of the stuff that you can actually do because there was actually videos on how he built the maps for that. And there is also the Wizards of Kanbari series, which I featured in, that also showcased a very uh, great array of some of the tools that you can use uh, and how you can basically uh, you can basically run a BTT via um, Dungeon Fog. Um, so some some pretty cool stuff there. So check that out. And uh, of course, if you wish to see more of Guy and Till, you can find them on some of the tutorial videos on world building during their Circle of World Building tutorial that happened uh, at the end of it was at the end of last month or a couple of weeks ago. End now. of May, yeah. End of May. It was at the end of May. Uh, it was fantastic, and lots of the content is still available for you guys to watch out. And of course, featured the ever wonderful and talented Janet. Uh, Janet, tell us where we can find you and your awesome things as well. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I am Janet from World Anvil. I was recently pointed out to me that I am one of the very few female CEOs in the gaming writing business, which is kind of nice. Uh, and I run World Anvil, which is where you can build worlds and organize them and show them off if you want to, and also run campaigns and also write novels and publish them. So pretty much a one-stop shop for anyone doing creative stuff. In addition, we have a YouTube channel and a Twitch channel, and we go live five times a week talking about gaming and writing and world building and getting on experts as well. So you can find all of that at World Anvil at the various locations on the internet. If it says World Anvil, it is us. And we, uh, yeah, we just just want to help you guys make beautiful things. Awesome, awesome. And of course, one of the more most popular people I find uh, in the gaming circuits in Europe, and of course, one of my the most uh, popular people in my little circle of people because I like them and I love them. Uh, Myri, tell us where can we find you? What mischief are you up to? You've been doing so much stuff. I've had 
I, 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 I like every, every, almost every day now, I feel like there, there's been something on. Yes, and it's all in German, so you don't understand shit, sorry. I, you know what, I don't, but at the same time, I love the enthusiasm, and it encourages me to eventually learn German. I picked up some phrases that I can understand. Yes. I understand when people are frustrated and say, say swear words. I, I definitely pick that up. And we've got some great ones. We've got some really great ones. I mean, <laughs> our language usually sounds to people like we're swearing anyway. So when we really start swearing, that's that's an experience. Uh, also, yeah, I do TTRPG stuff. I GM, I write, I uh, na name it, and I probably tried it at least. Uh, <laughs> that's all in Orkenspalter TV or under my wish, Stritter. Stritter, Stritter. Uh, do you have any? Dritter uh, is the German pronunciation. Dritter. Close, but no cigar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I I can't roll my s's like like yeah without making it sound like I'm swearing. Um. So uh, yes, no, lots of really cool stuff. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch this as well. There are actually some uh like for me, I actually struggle with science fiction uh, as one of my my main genres. I am actually not a fan of science fiction. I've only recently come into enjoying it myself. I know, shake your head all you want, I did not enjoy Star Trek and I had to be part of a Star Wars LARP group for three years, okay? It changes a man. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> I digress watching Myri uh, play in games such as uh, Star Trek and uh, the Shadowrun and Cyberpunk and stuff like that. Uh, was that, that was Cyberpunk you were doing the other night, wasn't it? Yes? No? Am I making it up? I could be come, come, come again, Cyberpunk? Um, no, we didn't play Cyberpunk um, 20 whatever yet. Um, we do Shadowrun a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because no, a lot of people play this. Don't check this out because it is, it, like, seriously, it is still some very inspirational stuff and uh, can definitely help you on your way uh, into, um, <laughs> I'm getting objected to in my chat by my players for the fact that I'm not enjoying sci-fi. Uh, so I'm going to have to do No, no, not sci-fi. Star no? Trek. Star oh, Trek. Star Trek. I will fight you. Look, you know, the only time I, I, I felt, I, the only thing I loved Star Trek was the brand new movies with, you know, like the, like the last three ones. And even, you know, like that, that the, the, the one with what's the, the guy who played that dude from Heroes. That was it. That was it. That was, that was it. Myri's no, left. Myri's left. Oh, Myri's left. Myri's left. You've, <laughs> that's how much it, she's that's objected. It. That's, 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 that's it. That's it. That's what's happened. And now we're all different people. Which is amazing. Is that? <laughs> 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 All right, and on that note, guys, my name is Michael, and I am the Dead Aussie Gamer. You can find my face pretty much everywhere. Um, anywhere you type Dead Aussie Gamer, you'll find me. I'm on other people's channels. I do stuff on How to Be Great GM. I do stuff on uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I do stuff uh, here on Mercs of Mischief, and I do stuff on my own channel. If you want to see all my behind-the-scenes stuff, I do a lot of my GM prepping on that channel. Um, also, if you guys would love, stick around, follow this channel uh, because there's tons of really exciting and cool stuff here, including Avalon Society. Sorry, no, the Avalon Knights. Academy, of which is a the Avalon Society is a spiritual kind of adjacent um, setting with with the same kind of notions, uh, and of course too many warlocks. And if you would like to head on over to the Mercs of Mischief YouTube channel where you can catch up on all the the, the playbacks as well as some really cool videos on uh, assembling, making, and creating Hero Forge minis with a bunch of named celebrities. So yeah, go check those out as well. And last, but of course, certainly not least, uh, we have Eddie behind the scenes running our tech desk. Uh, if you want to go check him out, head on over to Tabletop Explorers, where you can uh, see some of his uh, very, very cool and awesome work as well. And as we sign off for yet another game, uh, Eddie, can we show the uh, the 1st of July thing? Because this is a nice big one, and I, I'd like to, uh, to talk about it. And that is, of course, on July 1st. Um, some of us will be playing on the Great GM Live channel in a game called Maximum Apocalypse. And if you thought uh, London Falls was full of chaos and, and mayhem and anarchy, then definitely go and check this out. I am going to be playing a game with, yes, by the way, that is actually a felted friend who will be att in attendance. We are playing with some very colorful characters in this particular game. So definitely check that out. That is next Wednesday july the first or if you're in australia new zealand it'll be uh, like midnight july the second but uh yeah it'll be in the on the evening or morning of july the first so yeah go check that out uh share some love it will be there uh and thank you so much guys once again till next time as always from us to you game hard or die trying bye everyone